dynamic performance, sophisticated British style, MG Pilot Smart Speed Assist, the new standard in performance, style and safety. With so many impressive inclusions, this is value you've never seen before. The all-new MG HS, the SUV you've never seen before. Welcome to Give Our Goes 101, driven by MG. Now, before I announce my guest, I just want to say a little bit about what her she's done in her career. Now, state basketball team in Victoria, under 16s, under 18s, and under 20s. A scholarship holder for, I think, at least two years. Australian under 19 gems and under 21 sapphires, I think a silver medal. NBL, WNBL player for many years, two championships. WNBA, WNBA for six years with LA and Seattle. Member of the Opals, the world champs in 2010, 2018, silver medals. Olympian, bronze medalist in London. Played in France and won a France Cup, the French Cup. Com Games gold medal, or oh, two, two French Cups in France. Com Games gold medal, that is absolutely unbelievable. Genere, hey, welcome to Gibbo Goes One on One. When you think about what you've done in your career, is that like, do you look, have you looked back at all and, and just been amazed at what you've been able to achieve and still, and still going? Well, it's not if I sit here very often and go through it like you just went through it. Um, but to hear that um, sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? It's amazing, right? To think that you, you've, you know, championships in WNBL, played in the WNBA, overseas and won over there, Olympian. Um, it's pretty amazing to think what you've been able to achieve and there's still no end in sight. I know we're a little bit older, but still have plenty, plenty of years left to play. I don't know about plenty, but it's still going for now. <laughs> so hopefully a few more, another WNBL championship there maybe, um, another Olympic medal would be nice. And then um, home soil world champs in 2022. So hopefully I can get to that point and then we'll um, see what happens after that. I'm going to get to those um, oh, a little yeah, bit okay. later on. How amazing is it to know now that the WNBL season is going ahead, even though it's going to look a little bit differently, but to, to finally reveal and, and know that you're going to be playing a season must be pretty exciting for, for all the girls in the WNBL. Yes, finally. It's all announced and uh, stoked to have a season that's up and running. It's going to be a tough little season ahead with 14 games, I think in 32 days and then finals on top of that. Um, but everyone's worked really hard to get this season up and running and heading up to Queensland and uh, it's going to be fun. I understand BA, the clubs, and I think you guys with the Players Association kind of work together, obviously, to, to come up with the best option available. How hard was that and the challenges to, to try and um, create, I guess, a season with what's been going on? Yeah, there was a lot of back and forth, um, but it was really important that we had a season just with the years coming up with Olympics next year and the World Champs on Home Soil in 2022. So really important to have a WNBL season. So all the parties were working together, but there was a lot of back and forth. Um, but we've finally got something together now and we're all really excited to get up there. Um, but it's going to be tough. Um, you know, we'll be gone for about eight, nine weeks uh, up there. Uh, and on WNBL uh, incomes aren't the main source of income for a lot of the girls in the league. So sort of giving up that to go into this hub situation, um, it's tough on a lot of people. There's some mums that are coming up with their kids. Um, so there was a lot to work through, but stoked to have a season and we're ready to go. Obviously it's super important to, I mean, you guys had a lot of momentum kind of building and for the young kids that inspire to be you, guys, you girls and to, to be able to watch now, I guess see you girls play. That's obviously super important too for the growth of the game um, in Australia for the, for all the younger kids watching to to see and be able to watch. Yeah, particularly important for the young girls watching. Um, but I think also the young players in our league. We don't have imports this year, so there's going to just be a lot of opportunities for those uh, you know eighth, ninth, tenth players on the rosters and also our development players who are coming up. So everyone has 12 on their roster. Um, I think we've got 13. We're bringing three development players. And with so many games in such a short period of time, I think there's just going to be a lot of opportunities for those younger girls. Um, and I'm excited to see what they produce this season. Talk me through the rundown of how it's going to work. So I think it's it's 14, is it 14 games over like almost a day every, a game every two days? Like tell me through the, 
the process or the scheduling of how it's going to work up there? Yeah, so 14, from my understanding, 14 games in 32 days um, between three different cities. So Mackay, Townsville and Cairns. Uh, so excited to play in front of the home fans up there. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a tough schedule. Um, there's a couple of, I've only seen our schedule, but a couple of back-to-backs in there. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much sort of every other day, three or four games a week, I believe. So yeah, this old bod, Gibbo, I don't know about it. I reckon you'll be, you'll handle it fine. Uh, now I want to talk about your Flyers team because on paper, unbelievable lineup. That's, you got Leilani Mitch. I, I believe all these players are playing. Leilani, Bet Cole, yourself, Sarah Blickhouse. Amy Clydesdale, Rach Jarry, Steph Blickavs, and the prize recruit that's come back to play and has found a love for the sport is Liz Cambridge. Like, how amazing one is that team, first of all? I know you obviously went through the grand final loss and there must be a lot of motivation to, to not have that happen again. Um, Thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome. Um, to have your core group come back and then to add some certain pieces, um, you, we, all, we all know if you're going to win a championship, you need to keep your core together. And you girls have been able to do that and then add in some pretty pretty important pieces. Yeah, uh, when Jerry Ryan from Jayco first brought out the team, uh, he put a great commitment into getting the Southside Flyers together. So he wanted a commitment back from a lot of the players. So a lot of us had two-year contracts. So being able to keep that core together for multiple years, I don't think... Um, obviously disappointed with last year, um, but great first year. And I think we can really build on that. And then, yeah, the recruits recruits we've got this season, um, I'm excited to see it all come together. Uh, Leilani had a great season over in the WNBA. She's with her family in Newcastle at the moment. So we haven't seen her yet. And Liz has just gotten back out of quarantine. So starting to get everyone back onto the court and um, it's looking good so far. So we'll see how we go. Obviously, to win a championship, needs some luck and injuries. Hopefully, don't. Obviously, you were injured for the grand final last year, and they happen. But that's obviously super important to look after your bodies. Like you said, obviously, a little bit older with the back-to-back games and handling that whole process. To have such a deep squad is going to be super important for what. I mean, we haven't gone through it as the men's competition um, and you wouldn't have either with the back-to-back games and such short games and short amounts of time, the recovery and looking after yourselves will be super important to try and win a championship. Yeah, it really is. And I think, um, you know, normally we've come off, I don't know, NBL one season um, where you've been playing all year round, but this season, especially being Victorian, you would know all about that. Um, You know, the uh, lead into this season has been really different. So I think we've done our best to keep our weights going, doing our running sessions outside and stuff. Um, but it is a very different lead into the season this year. So I think it'll be really about managing bodies. Hopefully um, we can keep as injury free as possible. As you said, you need a bit of luck um, throughout a season, especially this season. So we've got a really great support staff with physios and massage and our strength and conditioning guy coming up. So I think hopefully we can keep fit and keep everyone on the court and um, we should be in with a good chance. You just mentioned the whole lockdown and, and obviously us here in Melbourne is still having months going through it. And you, you're a big ambassador for the Lifeline community. You're like a custodian for them. I think October 10 was World Mental Health Day. And I know this is something super important to you. Um, how have you been going through the whole lockdown and dealing with the mental side of, you know, being stuck at home and not being able to live your normal life? Um, I know it's, yeah, like I said, super important to you with your uncle passing away and, and whatnot. And you've done incredible work, but how have you coped and, and how are the girls coping through the whole COVID lockdown? Yeah, 2020 has been, um, been a ride. Um, I think mental health is extremely important, um, just as important as physical health. And I think that's something that we'll need to focus on up in Queensland as well in the hub, making sure everyone's mental health is okay. Uh, throughout 2020, it's been a roller coaster for me. Um, it was supposed to be a really big year with the Olympics and hearing um, that that was, you know, being postponed, cancelled, whatever it was going to be at the time. Um, I definitely had a lot of um, motivation issues, I guess. Um, Didn't really feel like training, didn't really know what I was training for. Uh, So it was definitely a roller coaster of emotions and I just let myself feel those emotions. Um, We've been locked up for a really long time now. Um, and not being able to train with your teammates all the time uh, who can help, you know, lift up your spirits and stuff like that. I think the middle of the year um, was particularly tough, but it's good to be back on court and seeing my teammates again. Um, We've done a good job of 
sort of staying in touch and keeping each other as motivated as we can. Uh, I live within five kilometers of Tess Magin, so we were doing some running sessions outside together and just trying to keep each other going as best we could uh, leading into this season, which was a real unknown at the time. Uh, so it's great that it's up and running now. Um, we're back on court. Um, and yeah, I just encourage everyone to reach out to their family and friends and check in because you never know what someone uh, is going through. I was just about to ask, like, what, what do you do um, for anyone that I guess doesn't really understand that whole area? Like, what do you do to, to help yourself in that area? Obviously, like you said, reaching out to friends and family, asking for help. Um, obviously, now you have the release of going to practice and being around, you know, your teammates obviously provide humour, but I guess someone to talk to and get out of the house. But um, for anyone that's kind of maybe going through similar stuff with similar issues that, that are struggling, like, what, what would you kind of recommend for them to to help themselves get through their days, I guess. Uh, I think it's really important to recognize when you're not feeling okay and that it's totally okay not to be okay. Um, but it's um, a strength, not a weakness to ask for help. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't realize how many people around them are willing to help, but uh, you need to be able to ask that. For me personally, I love getting outside and walking my dog. Um, I live near the beach, so getting down and feeling that sea breeze is really good for my mental health. Uh, being locked inside a lot, that's just really helped during this time. And I'm a bit of a homebody anyway, um, so I like to read. Um, I like to center myself. But everyone's going to be really different. Some people like to be surrounded by people, so I might be making more phone calls throughout a day to reach out to family and friends. Um, it might be going to see your bubble buddy, whatever that might be, um, just to be with people. Um, but everyone's gonna be on a real individual basis and you need to find out what's best for you. And it's um, a bit of trial and error with that, I think, for people. I'm not sure how long the round has been in the WNBL for, but the lifeline round, um, it must feel pretty amazing to have been a part of starting that up and, and getting that going to obviously raise awareness during the season for fans and everyone to get on board and donate. And what was it like to, to, to find out and have that, that round started for Lifeline? Yeah, that in our inaugural Lifeline round um, was extremely emotional. Uh, it wasn't too long after um, my uncle uh, passed and uh, we raised over $15,000 in that first year. Um, which was amazing, but most importantly, I think it was the um, recognition and uh, people talking about it, uh, which I think is a really great start. Just, it's a stigma that we really need to reduce. And I think that round really helped and I'm looking forward uh, to the second Lifeline round of this coming WNBL season. You're obviously an incredible role model in the WNBL. I mean, a lot of people look up to you. Um, I, I listened to saying it with Sarah, uh, Sarah Blickhouse, who's doing her little um, interviews with your team. And I think she's doing an amazing job. She interviewed Liz and, and Liz has gone through like her ups and downs with, you know, wanting to play, not wanting to play, like lost the love of the game. She took some time off and just listened to her speak. The fact that she wanted to come back, one, to be a part of the Opals and to, to work with Cheryl, but a big reason was, was yourself. She kind of sees you as like a mother, a big sister figure. Did she said um, mother. I don't know if you She did say mum. Um, now, I know you're not that old, but, you know, the work that you do with her on and off the court, obviously you're super passionate about it, but for her, a big personality like herself to, to want to come back and play with yourself, that must feel pretty cool um, to know that you have that kind of impact on, on people like that. Um, look, I don't like that she called me a mother, but, um, yeah, I think uh, we've played with each other for a really long time uh, and we have a real mutual respect for one another. Uh, I always check in with her. Um, I think she is a very uh, passionate, uh, enthusiastic, um, energetic person and I just want her to be her full self um, and I think we're very much opposites and I think that's sort of what works with us. Um, her um, enthusiasm and passion um, to my sort of uh, calm and collected I think works on the court and uh, she can't remember an offense to save herself so I'm there to sort of talk her through the offenses on the court and then off the court um, just to listen to her and um, you know we're always checking with one another and um, I'm excited to play with her again I'm glad she's back in the WNBL. It's obviously awesome um, 
with the WNBO that all the the Opal, or a lot of the Opals players, I think besides maybe Beck Allen, all this, all the core group are going to be here playing in Australia. That must be awesome. Like you said before, Tokyo coming up soon, the World Cup in Sydney 2022. Like to have all those players here, obviously hopefully some camps can eventuate once we get out of lockdown, but to have all the players for the Opals. When is that going to be, by the way? Dan Andrews is listening. Hopefully he can give us some kind of insight, hopefully in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm not holding my breath, but to have all the all the girls back to in the country playing against each other, I guess you'd be able to like I don't know if you can hang out with each other during the bubble and, and whatever how that all works, but to have everyone here, that must be exciting for the group of girls to you know obviously want to win a medal at Tokyo. Yeah, I think it's really important. Um, hopefully, we can get an Opals camp sorted uh, sort of not far after the season, um, and having everyone here. I think he's huge. Um, I think we have such a wonderful league. Um, and we've always got a lot of Opals, but to have every single one, yeah, bar Beck Allen, who's over in Spain, um, is amazing. And I think we're going to, um, it's going to be a great season ahead. And yeah, as you said, uh, getting us all together for Opals camp, it's really difficult when we've got WBA players, our coach coaches in the WBA, we've got European players. Um, so to have majority of us here should mean that we can get together and then have a really good lead into the Tokyo Olympics. How special is it to be the captain of the Opals? I'm sure when you're a little girl, you wanted to play for the Opals. You know, you obviously love basketball, but to be the captain of the national team is an unbelievable honour. And I imagine something that you hold pretty special. Yeah, it's hard to put into words. Um, yeah, as soon as I really started playing basketball, I wanted to be an Opal, um, looking up and watching Michelle Timms and our current coach, Sandy Brondello and um, Rachel Spall and Lauren Jackson, Penny Taylor, just so many greats. Um, I just always wanted to just represent Australia as an Opal and then to be the captain and go to the world champs in 2018 and get that silver medal. It was um, extremely special and uh, something I don't take for granted. We talked about the mental side of things. Um, obviously, we can't make every team and, and missing out on Rio, which probably shouldn't have happened. But how did you handle that? And then, you know, getting back to, you know, re reassessing your goals and obviously being back part of the squad and, and Tokyo is obviously a big goal. But handling that, the loss of missing out on that team and then kind of moving forward and maybe reassessing goals and, and going at it again. Yeah, obviously disappointing. Oh, hey, Cos. <laughs> Um, yeah, really disappointing. He, he didn't like it either, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think a basketball career is, as long as we've been playing Gibo, it seems quite long, but in the term of um, your lifespan, it's just a really small career. So as disappointed as I was, uh, I wanted to make the best of my basketball career. Uh, so I was playing over in um, America and Europe at the time. So just wanted to continue to improve my game. And I think uh, missing out made me um, sort of self-reflect on a lot of things. And I think that's helped me um, become the person and player that I am um, and has put me in the position to be the captain of the team now. Um, so I think everything does happen for a reason, as cliche and silly as that sounds, I guess. Yeah. Um, I do think that I was put in that position to help me get to where I am today. And I definitely look back uh, disappointed on that time, but... I'm very grateful to be back in the Opals and um, leading the team. Do you know what the next kind of year looks leading into Tokyo? Like if, you, if any kind of camps, tours, obviously, I don't know whether the tours will even happen now, but do you, do you have any kind of insight or any knowledge of what's going to happen leading up to, to Tokyo? Um, it's pretty much up in the air a lot. Uh, we had a meeting, I think it was last week, um, and we're hoping to get a camp in January before Sandy goes back to her family in America. Um, not quite sure where that will be, um, but mid to early January, try and get us all together to have a camp. Um, and then from there, not really sure, it just depends where the world is at with this virus. Um, but we'll be doing sort of mini camps. There's a lot of us in Victoria um, who can sort of train together uh, to try and, you know, keep fit um, and keep the ball in our hands. And yeah, we'll be ready for whatever the world allows us to do. We mentioned the World Cup in 2022 um, a little bit earlier. Now, I remember like watching the Sydney Olympics. Obviously, it's not Olympics, it's a World Cup, second best. Um, 
I remember watching the Olympics thinking this is amazing. To be able to play with your national team in your home country, I assume that would be a pretty high on the list and something special also to, to be able to do, to play with your national team in front of your friends and family and, and country. That would be amazing. Yeah, so for basketball, the major tournaments are the Olympics and the World Championships. And I guess we got a little taste with the Commonwealth Games being um, up in Townsville and on the Gold Coast. And that was amazing. Um, my parents came up and watched the finals and my eldest brother did as well. Um, I think he thought he had sort of missed the chance to watch me play in the green and gold because he didn't get to the Worlds or the Olympics. Um, so for him to come up to the Gold Coast and watch that final was um, really special. And then to think that it's a major tournament for basketball going to be here in Australia, I cannot wait. Um, it's going to be amazing and um, just two really big years for the Opals and um, we'll be ready. One thing I love about um, all you girls that play basketball, obviously I know a lot of you, is the fact that you support each other so much. Like when I posted about, I'm going to be interviewing you, I had that many comments and DMs. Like That's super, female, NBL pod. Super excited, right? I, I love it. Um, it must be pretty cool to know that, um, you know, Sammy Whitcomb and Ezzy, who just won a WNBA championship, part of the Opals group as well, like, just the success that they've now had to be able to go over there and win championships. I'm assuming all the girls just love that and get around them as, as well as yourself and every other female basketball that I know that just, I love the support and just the feedback that they give you guys give each other and you're posting stupid photos all the time. And just every birthday, Kayla George is posting up some ridiculous photos and it's just awesome. I, I love it. But for the fact that they could win a WNBA championship, that's pretty cool and pretty special. Yeah, that's just the first of many championships for Ezzy's career. Uh, she's just, um, you know, I, I played with her a couple of years ago with the Boomers. She's been involved with the Opals and just every step she takes, um, she just rises to the occasion. She's, what, 21 now, I think. Um, right. And I remember, you know, her at the Commonwealth Games, whenever she get on, she was just great. And then we go to the World Championships, it's a step up again, and she just rises to the occasion. Um, she went to university games, she was great. She comes to Opals camp, she's amazing. She goes over to the WNBA and just continues to do her thing. And she won that championship and I'm so proud of her. And then Sammy Whitcomb, uh, she is one of the hardest workers that I've ever seen. And every bit of success that goes her way is just so thoroughly deserved and just stoked for the two of them to win that WBA championship. And I think um, the support of all the women in the WBL, um, you know, we, we all come together for Opus Camps and we're all just a really close bunch. And um, I think it shows the culture that we have in that group that we all do support each other and we all just want the best for one another. Do you find it hard, like obviously a lot of you girls have chopped and changed teams and played with each other and then played against, like do you find it hard, you know, sometimes going against them in games? I, I usually like it playing against old teammates because I know their moves and it's always a bit of a joke and a bit of fun, but do you ever get like that competitive where it's like, you know, I know Tess Magin throws elbows like they're going out of fashion and the battle, the battles you have on court, is that fun? Like do you enjoy playing against your friends and, and former teammates and, and all that? I love it. There's no love lost on the court. If you watch, um, I don't know, the Flyers versus the Caps, there's elbows going everywhere and, you know, then straight after the game we're hugging each other and um, it's all fun. Oh, dogs are all about it today. Um and I think I, I just love competition. Um, I never want to lose. So I'm given everything that I've got. Um, and same goes for the opposition as well. So I love that competition. As you said, you know their moves. Um, you try and get away from the elbows. Throw it for yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going to be a fun season. That's for sure. Obviously, the Flyers are aiming for a championship. Uh, that close, I think. And I'm not trying to bring it up. But I heard on one of Sarah's interview I think it was five points out of the like total out of the, the losses losses in the uh in the grand final yeah game one was two points game two was three points so a total of five points just yeah it's crazy how close it is though right like a few little extra shots are, are still here and there like it's that close but like I said before like I said before it's awesome you've brought that group back you've added some pieces as long as you can I know you asked the question but I want to ask you a question would you prefer to lose by one or two or to lose by 20 it's a great question I think by 20 right 
I think about literally every single play from game one and two, what I could do better. But if you lose by 20, you're like, okay, that team's better. Yeah, it's a tough one. Like, obviously, you know, like if you're down by 20, like I think grand final game three against Perth when I was with Adelaide, we, we were down by like 20 at half time and it was done. Like you knew it. Whereas if it's a close one on the buzzer, or like that's that's super heartbreaking. So I imagine that's really burning within not just yourself, but your group to do what you can to not let that happen again. Yeah, well, we've just got to be up by 20, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go, problem solved. I've got some questions for you. What is the best thing about being the Australian captain? Oh, um, the best thing. Um, oh my gosh. Um, I, I think everything's great about just being an Opal in general. I, I don't think there's... Um, a specific thing about being the captain that makes it any better just being an opal is um what i dreamed of as a young girl so being an opal is just incredible i'm assuming this came from a fan of the move uh, of the melbourne boomers but why did you leave the melbourne boomers um <laughs> okay um i think that i needed a change um, which is a bit of a cliche answer as well. Um, and also I didn't like the contract that they offered me. That's fair enough. 100% yeah. fair enough. Um, who is your favorite roommate? Who is my favorite roommate? Um, well, I room with Rebecca Cole with the flyers. Is that the person who asked this question? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> yes. I'll say Rebecca Cole. Smart answer. Who brings the best snacks on tour? Tessa Levy, she's the snack queen. I yeah, love she, rooming with her. She brings all the Skittles. Skittles, is that is that her go-to snack? It's the go-to snack that I steal from her. <laughs> where's your Where's your favorite tour been? Uh, obviously, been kind of tours with the Australian team, like you, a lot of different places. But do you have a favorite place that you've you've loved to travel to? Mine for the Boomers was we went to Croatia. It was absolutely amazing. Um, do you have a, Do you have a favorite place you've you've been to with the Aussie team? Well, I think the 2018 World Champs was in Tenerife, so an island off of Spain. Um, we're on the water, we won silver, so just great names and a great place. What comes to mind when you hear the word temper? Oh, just the best mattress in the world. Isn't it? Is that like the best, like, I always talk to people, and obviously we, we're very lucky with our beds, but... To think you spend a third of your life in a bed, you should probably invest in it. Like, people go and spend thousands on cars that you're in for a couple of hours a day, whatever else. So invest in your bed, I think is unbelievably important considering you spend that much time in it. I've had my temper bed for a year. It's the best year of sleep I've had. And I've got the adjustable base. So I lay in there with my legs up for recovery. Can't speak highly enough about temper beds and temper pillows. Now in isolation, have you found a new hobby? No. Nah. No origami? Ah, <laughs> oh, do you want my dad, Joe? Yeah, I, um, I took up origami, but way too much paperwork. <laughs> um, now, I don't think you're going to answer, but I feel like you should. You're playing two on two against someone else. You have to pick one partner, your brother Matt or your brother Luke. Both, both great players from Nutterwadding back in the day. Um, isn't 3x3 like the no, modified no. version? We just play together. I think that would be great. It's two on two. <sighs> Matt or Luke? Um, okay. This is so hard. Yeah. Love you both, Matt and Luke. But I think I need someone who's more of a driver because I'm a three-point shooter. So I'm going to go Luke because if I was more of a driver, I'd be kicking out to Maddie, but I want to spot, spot and shoot. So I'm going to go Luke. Sorry, Left Matt. Left hand drive, kick out to me. Sorry, Matt. Um, Love you, Matt. Did you get more excited with Liz returning to play with you in the NBL, uh, WNBL or her dunk at the Olympics? Her dunk at the Olympics. Were you at the game or did you see it? We were at the game. I think it was against Russia and we were in the fan section, or the player section, and they had like four or five fans down below and all the men's team were there were watching 
And every time they scored, they would stand up in front of us, we'd get into them, like tell them to sit down. And then Liz had that dunk and we all just erupted. We were going at it, we were yelling. It was one of the best things I've seen at the Olympic Games. Like amazing. And do you know what? It was the season before we played um, at the Balloon Boomers together. And there was a couple of grand on the line from a sponsor if she dunked into the game. And she never did. And then she just pulls it out just down the lane against Russia at the Olympic Games. Yeah. It, was a stand age. it was amazing. It was so good to be there in that crowd. Uh, what, sure I was what, opening the corner for a three, though. Yeah, well, hopefully she doesn't do that with the flyers. Yeah. Um, Olympic highlight. Bronze Not medal. that one. Bronze medal. The bronze medal? Yeah. What about the opening ceremony? Well, do you know what? I actually preferred the closing ceremony because the Spice Girls played and I was up front and it was like all my childhood dreams were coming true at once being at the Olympics and dancing out to Spice Girls. That's fair. Uh, toughest opponent you've played against? Diana Trussi. Great answer. Um, Favourite thing about playing overseas? Uh, like in America or in Europe? Either. Um, I think in Europe, um, just being able to visit so many different places. Like Europe, you drive two hours and you're in a completely different country. So yeah. I think just um, the travel experience of playing in Europe, um, although some of our travel days were brutal, uh, I think... Yeah, being able to see so many different countries in such a short amount of time was really amazing. When I sent you the link to the this podcast, you said <laughs> I'll see you back. Did you have you picked up much French uh, since playing over there, or was it just a, a thank you? Um, so I understood pretty much everything in terms of basketball by the time I left, but my pronunciation of things was just <laughs> terrible. But the best thing I picked up in France was definitely Cosmo because I rescued him over in France and brought him back to Australia. And you had to fly him back, right? That, that was a mission, like a small fortune, like you said on your other interview. But how, how amazing are dogs? The best. The best. I was always petrified of dogs. So now I've got one and I can't imagine life without him and he needs to live till 103. <laughs> um, now, you didn't want me to ask this. I wasn't going to, but since you asked, um, MJ... Or LeBron. Now I think they are They are both unbelievable players. I hate the whole like oh, comparison. Let's talk about who's better. Blah blah blah. Like just let them be their own whatever. But do you have a favorite um, out of the two? I've always been MJ, but I just everything that LeBron's done, both on and off the court, is just amazing. Him just as a human being, um, I love. That's fair. Kind of on the fence answer, but I'll take that. All right. <laughs> this is my last one. You have to put together an all-star five of your own team and you're in it. I've done it. I've produced a five that you've played with. So Aussie teams, WNBL, NBA teams, French teams. I want your best five um, with you in it. So four others to, to make your all-star five. I've got mine that I think. Is that I've played with. That you've played with anywhere in the world. Two bird is my point guard. That's who I had. My two men. I'm going to come back to the two men. Am I the three men? You're the three. Well, then I'm going to go Stewie and Candice. Do you have them? I've got Candice. Oh, no. Can I have a massive team? You can have five, but it can be Opals. It can be anyone. Yeah. So then I'm got. hang on. I'll go, Sue is the one, me is the two, Stewie is the three, Can is the four, Liz is the five. It's not bad. I've gone a little bit old school. Um, I've, I've put LJ as the five. Yeah, right. You play with her, right? Lauren Jackson? Yeah, the Olympics. Candice at the four, you at the three, Sue at the one. And I put Chrissy Harrow in the two because um, I know you but you kind of had her in the in her back end of her career, but I've just gone great players. Yeah, I've played with a lot of good people. There's plenty that's of what that like, comes down to. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I was just intrigued to see who you put in there. But that's yeah. not bad. You can move yourself to the two and put Stewie in there. 
Yeah. And this is obviously unbelievable. Like that you you've played with a lot of great players. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much why I'm where I'm at. All the players I played with. Because you're so old. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but you're older than me. Just remember that, Gibbo. By a couple of months. Jen, that's all I had for oh, you. Isn't it a year and a couple of months? Nah, nah, it's like a couple of months. Anyway, um, Jen, I really do appreciate you taking the time out. I understand you were concussed yesterday in your practice um, and we had to push this back a little bit. So yeah, I, 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 I know you some of your answers a little bit dazed because of that, but um, we've known each other. You've been in the head. You're a year and a couple of months for 17 years ish now. And I think it's absolutely amazing what you've done in your basketball career on and off the court. It's pretty amazing to all teammates, um, people you play against that look up to you and you're a massive role model for them and everything you've done with the mental health and Aussie team. It's, it's pretty amazing. And um, yeah, I'm glad that I've been a part of it in some way. And I'm glad I got to talk to you on, uh, on the podcast. Thanks, Gib. I'm not going to be able to walk out my front door. You're just giving me a big head. But nah, I, Are you going to have more females on this pod? That is the plan. Um, Love it. We've been trying to get a, a few on and, um, yeah, we haven't been able to yet. But um, Honoured to be the first. You are the first. I, I said we've got to set the bar high and, and you've definitely... You can only go down from here, right? I appreciate you jumping on. Good luck for the WNBL season. We hope it goes really well out there in the bubble or the hub um, and we'll certainly be watching. Thank you.